Hi, I'm Amanda Niederhauser, AKA Jedi Craft Girl. You might know me from Instagram or from my blog, but I'm so excited to be here at Riley Blake because I'm showing you how to make a super fun project today. We're going to be making this patchy pumpkin quilt and it's a perfect size to either put on a table or hang on a wall. And as you'll notice, it definitely has a Halloween vibe. And I've used some of my scaredy cat fabric that I've designed for Riley Blake, which is right here. And it's super cute oranges and blacks and grays. And I've also added some Riley Blake basics in, which is such a fun way to get a scrappy look as you can kind of see here. So to make this quilt, you're gonna need these materials. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is download the pattern and you can find this on my blog. And it's a PDF so you have everything you need, even the pumpkin pattern. So once you've downloaded and printed that, we're ready to get started. As you can see on the quilt, um, there's two different sizes of pumpkins and they're kind of scrappy pumpkins. So I'm gonna show you how to get this look without a lot of intricate piecing. It's kind of a cheater's way. So first you're going to take four five inch squares of different orange fabric. The scrappier, the better for this. And you're gonna sew them together just like you would a four patch and you're gonna press them and then press that final seam open so it lays nice and flat. So this is gonna be our pumpkin. You could actually piece this any way you wanted. This is just a super fast, easy way and you most likely have this size of fabric on hand. Next, we're going to take our applique medium which I'm using heat and bond light, which I love because it's super lightweight and you can quilt right over it. You can see in the pattern here, I have just quilted through the pumpkins, which really makes it feel like it's part of the quilt and not just applique on. So I have my pumpkin pattern. There's two sizes. Feel free to make your own pumpkin. You could even have your kids draw one or you could have all four be different. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this little squatty one, which I love squatty pumpkins. So I'm just going to trace my pattern line and this doesn't have to be super perfect. So I'm just gonna follow the line. Here we go. Okay, so now you can see I've drawn my pumpkin. I'm gonna set the pattern over here. So we're gonna to go to our ironing board and now we're gonna fuse the pumpkin to the back of our four patch. So I've got it right here. So here's a little bit of a trick. If you put it like this, you're gonna have a diagonal pumpkin. If you center it, it's gonna look like the pumpkin I have here. And if you off-center it, you could have the center seam kind of off-centered, which might be fun. I'm gonna just do it right in the center. Okay, so I have it centered. I'm gonna take my dry hot iron and I'm going to just heat set this in place. So you wanna just give it a few seconds. You don't wanna go back and forth too much because there is adhesive and it could slide. So I'm just trying to do some firm pressure. All right, that looks good. And I've glued it to the ironing board. You also wanna do a little stem and you can see here, I have our stem already cut out. Um, there's two stem shapes on the pattern. You could also draw your own if you want a swirly one or you wanna get creative. So now that this is dry, all you do is cut on your drawn line. So I'm just gonna cut around. This is the fun part because all of a sudden it's gonna look like a pumpkin and not just a four patch. I was thinking you could totally turn this quilt into a Christmas quilt and do some kind of Christmas applique in the center. You could really customize it to any, any holiday, which is fun. So now you can see I have my little pumpkin and we peel off the backing paper. And the trick is you kind of bend it right here, like on the edge, and then it pierce, kind of pulls away. And then voila! So now I'm gonna position the pumpkin toward the bottom of my eight and a half inch background square. Um, just like that. And then I'm gonna tuck the stem under so it doesn't look like it's floating. And now I'm gonna go over to my ironing board and I'm gonna heat set this into place. Same way. Again, don't go back and forth. Just a nice firm pressure and it's gonna hold. So with this heat and bond light, because it's light, it wouldn't hold up in the wash if you were to just 
leave it like this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to outline sew. Now that this is cooled off, um, you would take it to your sewing machine and I've chosen to use black thread because I really wanted the pumpkin to pop. And instead of just sewing once around, which would be enough to kind of hold it, I at least would sew three times, which gives it this kind of sketchy feel, which I love because it kind of keeps with that patchy um, feel of the quilt. And you can kind of see in the sample that um, they've been sewn three times. So I love that. So once you've done this, just keep going and make three more or make even more and you can make a whole big quilt if you wanted. You could get really carried away. All right, so we have our pumpkin done. Now we're ready to add the borders. You can see here that the border includes black and orange, which really makes the block pop. To get started on our borders, we're gonna make half square triangles. And I love making half square triangles and I love using them in my quilts. You can see here, we have a half square triangle with orange and white, and we're also going to make half square triangles with black and white. So let's dig in, here we go. I like to make my half square triangles by starting with a little bit bigger than what's usually required. So we're gonna cut three inch squares out of our orange, our white, and our black. On each of the white squares, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Then we're gonna layer our squares together, right sides together, pair them up, and we're gonna sew a quarter inch along both sides of the diagonal line. And here you can see we have sewn our two seams. Now comes the fun part. You just get your little rotary cutter and you're gonna cut along the line. And now we have two triangles. We're gonna go over and we're gonna press these with our iron and I'm gonna press toward the dark like this. Okay, so our half square triangle needs to measure two and a half inches. And if you notice, it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be and that's on purpose. So we can square it up and have it exactly perfect, which will make all of your points in your quilt perfect. And I love perfect points, I'm a stickler. Okay, so I have this fun little two and a half inch square up ruler and all I'm gonna do is line up the diagonal line like this and then I'm gonna just cut and then I have this super fun spinny mat, which is like my favorite thing. It just needs to be a little bigger and I could put my cat on it, spin them around. Anyway, you're gonna just cut like that and now we have a perfect two and a half inch half square triangle. So you're gonna just continue this, making all the two and a half inch square half square triangles. I'll just set that right there. Okay, so now let's get to sewing. So we're going to lay out our orange four patch, half square triangle, half square triangle, two and a half inch square, and two and a half inch square. Notice all three of the oranges are different fabrics. I really, again, wanted a scrappy look to this. So you're gonna just sew this like a four patch. So I'm gonna sew those together, and these, and then I'm gonna press toward the plain block. And then sew those together. And what you're gonna get are these fun little corner blocks that we're gonna put on our block. And I love that they're all different fabrics and they're super scrappy. So you make four of those for each block. There's our corner. So the next little piece we're gonna do are the sides and the top and the bottom. So I have an eight and a half inch black rectangle. And then here is our two half square triangles with our black and white fabric. And then two white two and a half inch squares on the corners. So we're gonna just sew these together in a row like this and then press, and then we're gonna add the black rectangle. And what you're gonna get are these fun borders. And what I love about this, um, these units is that they kind of look like cat ears or bat ears. So I kind of think it looks like, I don't know, it kind of gives another Halloween element. You could actually use solid black fabric and hand embroider a little face on it. I thought that would be cute, but I also love the bones fabric. Okay, so we have our top and bottom and side units and our corner units all ready. It's time to put the block together. So we take our cute little pumpkin 
and we're gonna lay out our block. I always like to lay out my block so I don't get confused and sew the wrong pieces to the wrong sides, which I often do. So we're gonna have those, isn't that fun? And then here's our corners, and I love when we put the corners on, it just really makes that black pop. So you could totally just make one block and turn it into a pillow if you wanted, or you could make more and make an even bigger quilt, or just the four like we're making today. Okay, so this is how the block's gonna look. Now we just sew it together like you would a normal block in rows. So here is our bottom row. Those pieces get sewn together. Our center row, those pieces, and then our top row. And then for pressing, to make it easier, um, you're gonna press the orange toward the black and then this white toward this black. So just press toward the black and you'll be fine. That'll just allow for some really nice nesting seams here in the corners. So they look nice and sharp. So you're gonna sew that together, press, and you're gonna have your first block done. Then just keep going and make three more. So once you have all the blocks done, now what's next? I have put some sashing strips, two and a half inches in between to break it up so the points didn't connect. I really wanted the blocks to stand out and I think they do. So you're gonna just do some two and a half inch sashing with some corner squares. And once the sashing's done, you're ready to quilt it. Um, I just did some loop-de-loos that kind of look like, I don't know, a swirling Halloween night sky and just added some binding. So I hope that this project inspires you to get sewing and to get, to get creative. Maybe you want to make a table runner out of it. Again, maybe you want to turn it into something for Christmas. Um, I love giving you patterns that allow you to just be creative and to make whatever you want to make. Um, I've also kind of taken that same idea of letting you be creative. And I have a book that is released and it features many patterns similar to this where you learn how to make a block and then you get to decide what fabric, you get to decide what setting, and you really get to be creative in what you make. You can make a quilt, you can make a table runner, you can make a wall hanging like that. And it's all in my book, Playful Pre-Cut Quilts. And um, I just really love this process and I love creating things that allow you guys to just create and use your imagination and make things that you love because quilting is about joy and what could be more joyous than a day spent in the sewing room? I can't think of any.